Um, I'd like to introduce you guys to Zach Retz. He's going to be giving his, uh, his talk today. I hope you enjoy it. It should be a good one. Yeah. Uh, uh, cool. Thanks, guys, for coming. This is awesome. Uh, my throat's a little messed up because I've been yelling like all weekend. But uh, uh, can, can you guys hear me in the back? All right, cool. Um, yeah, this is all downloaded, so I think we're good to go. <clears throat> and um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start painting something, and uh, I'm kind of treating it like uh, like how I would treat like an assignment at work or something. Um, so please just. Just ask me questions as I'm going. Uh, yeah, so on my phone, I grabbed like a couple images um, that I kind of like. Um, and then um, I have a, yeah, this is my favorite brush right here. I tend to use that for just about everything. And then I, I shrink my thing, my canvas down really small. And I kind of start it like a, like a storyboard sketch or something. <laughs> so I try to like plot out like the basic perspective. Um, just so I've got some lines to follow. When I do these sketches, I don't, uh, I don't plot everything out like exactly, you know, because then it's it feels too. Um, you can get too like tied down to these perfect lines. As I'm doing this, I'm just I'm thinking about composition and how to like balance this out and like lead your eye around. Um, I want to have like a big shape here, smaller shape over here. Now I'm thinking about foreground, middle, burn, middle ground, and background shapes. I've got 
a rock close to camera here. And then these, I'm gonna, I'm thinking about how things will step back into space. So, you've got rocks that are gonna lead the eye to the focal areas. And you can see, I'm, even though I'm painting it or drawing in some details, I'm still keeping it really loose and, and messy at this stage. Because detail stuff can come later. when I'm designing, as I'm like drawing this stuff in, I'm thinking about designing these shapes. So like even mountains in the background, there's, there's a reason for their shape. So like this mountain over here, I'm going to have it kind of point in to this. Um, cool. So I, I keep my layers organized. I, I keep my lines on a layer and then I can um, then I can paint underneath it. So after I have a sketch that I kind of like, then I'll, I'll go into color. And I build, I build my painting up like I would a traditional painting. Um, so I'm thinking about the colors and how I want them to like overlap and uh, layer. Um, um, Probably like once a week, I'll like go out painting traditionally. Um, I do acrylic uh, most of the time. Um, I also do some oil, but I like acrylic because um, it's really cheap. You can, uh, it's easy to travel with if you like go for a hike or something. You can just keep your stuff in your backpack and it's small. Um, it's great for doing like small little studies. Um, I'm choosing this kind of like dirty yellow color because I'm painting this castle and I'm looking at the bricks and thinking about um, the bricks will have like a warm kind of uh, local color, but then they're affected by like cool atmosphere light. Uh,
try to block in the biggest shapes first. Something that that usually happens when you're painting a lot, like atmospheric stuff is you'll notice mountains or like things far away. They won't just go. Well, it depends on the sky color, but in like a blue sky situation, um, they'll they'll have like a tint of purple to it. You can tell. Like I took the watercolor, I shifted it a little bit more purple. Um, and that's because when you go back in atmosphere, um, things get less saturated. So if you desaturate a blue, um, it'll feel more, more purple. It'll be like putting a little bit of warm into it. You guys have questions? Just just shout them out. Otherwise, I'll just kind of talk a little bit. Um, my what? Um, usually I use Photoshop for like work work. Um, Procreate I will use for um like trips, traveling, um, where I don't have a computer. Or uh, if I go to a cafe and I want to like sketch, uh, just like a change of scenery. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. I'm looking. I'm sorry, I can't show it. But uh, afterwards, if you want to come up, I'll show you. Um, but yeah, I'm. You'll see um, after I'm, I'm looking at the colors in my reference, but I think about them in a way um, to like uh, to push it more because I don't I don't just want a painting to look like a photo. I want it to have like energy of a painting and like pushed colors and lighting. Um, yeah. I don't know if is that really tiny. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, you can just stop up after. I'll show you. But so I'm like I'm like making up the composition and stuff. But I always get like references for like color and like shapes and. Um, yeah, when I'm gathering references, um, I'll, ga I'll grab some for, like, color stuff, and that might be, like, master paintings I like, or, um, just, like, landscape paintings or whatever. Um, and then I'll, I might grab some for, like, compositions I like, um, or I'll just make it up. Something like this, I'm just gonna gonna make it up. As I'm doing this, I'm I'm like mixing these colors together so they all like react with each other. So if this is like a sandy beach down here. Um I can mix that that blue uh into the brown and get a good sand color. That wet sand.
Um, Um, water, I love to look for, like, the, like, the top plane of the water is going to be, um, is going to have the color of the sky in it, and it's going to be less saturated. So I think about the water as, as kind of like, um, like a plane, and then, like, when a wave comes underneath the wave, and when you're, like, looking into the water, um, that's going to be the more saturated part. Um, and then if there's sunlight passing through that water, then it's going to get like really saturated. That's what I think about like in terms of um, the color for that. A uh, color key for a movie. Um, uh, it depends. Uh, there's a lot of factors for that because um, sometimes you'll get like just like a storyboard sketch or like a really um, like rough uh, like uh, previs like model um, with like no color or anything in it. Um, and um, it also depends on what they want. So, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, like something where they don't give you much, it might take a day. Um, or if they want, like, really quick, um, I can do, like, a few in a day. Um, sometimes they'll give you, um, like, the 3D with, like, the local colors and everything in it already. So then it's really easy to just paint on top of it a little bit and, like, color adjust things. Um, I've done, like, five or eight of those in a day before. Um, they didn't... Like, there are some people who would, who would spend... Um, they're they're like slower, but they would give something like more detailed or something. Um, uh, for me, I was kind of known as like the fast uh, guy on the movie, so um, I would try to like produce a lot. They didn't they didn't like tell me I had to or anything. It's just like I wanted to do a lot, so they like kept me. <laughs> uh, they fired a lot of people in that movie uh, but yeah I was like alright if I stay really fast and uh, I do some good colors or something maybe they'll, they'll keep me for a while um, but yeah they didn't, they didn't pressure me to like do like an insane amount of work or anything we're pretty good about that. Um, I think when I'm starting, I think about like cinematic, uh, like storytelling, um, and composition. Um, then I think about, uh, lighting and value structure. Um, and then I think about the colors, um, and mood. Yeah, kind of in that order. Yes.
Yeah. Um, so you can help to focus the eye on a certain part of your your painting if you if you saturate. Say if you use more neutrals through your whole painting, and then you put like the most saturated color closer to your focal point, um, then your eye will go there. So I'm always thinking about that. Uh, yeah, um, like I'm always trying to like switch up like my workflow and stuff, just to like keep it, keep it fresh and experiment. But uh, yeah, lately I've been doing something similar to this for for all my stuff, and Photoshop is kind of the same way. Um, I use it a lot. I have it set as like a, what do you call it? One of those buttons. Uh, <laughs> hockey. Um, yeah, so I'm always just like lassoing things and like painting in with like big brush strokes. Um, it's good to use that to get like hard edges. You can have hard, hard versus soft. Um, not really. Um, sometimes I'll like separate out a character. Um, if I know I want to like redraw it a lot or something. But yeah, if I start breaking things into like background, middle ground, foreground or something, then I'm not just painting. I'm like thinking about like, okay, now I want to like, go to the background layer and then paint that. Now I've got to like switch to the foreground layer. I, yeah, it's like it takes me out of like the painting and then I don't do as good of a job. And then I always paint in the wrong layer. So I end up merging everything anyways. Yeah, I um, if I'm doing something like a higher res painting that needs to be like printed really big, um, I'll, I'll start off small, I'll do like a sketch like this, and then once I get everything blocked in with like really big brush strokes, then I'll up res it to whatever size I want, um, and then I'll like finish it because if you if it's too big, you might get a little bit of lag and. Uh, so you remember when I was blocking in this castle, I put down like the this orangey yellow color. Um, it's kind of like the the local color of the stone. Uh, so now I'm hitting like the these deep shadows, and that's going to be the local color, but much darker and even more saturated.
uh, because the atmosphere isn't getting to those underplanes. Uh, and the, the sky will desaturate things. And painting green is tricky. I always add some more warm to the green. Yeah, I'll um I'll just start painting on top of the the drawing layer, so I'll keep like some of the lines. Um I'll do that once I've got everything kind of blocked in. Yeah. Uh, um, it's like nine to six, get an hour off for lunch, and I think you get uh you're supposed to get like an like a forty five minute break in the afternoon or something. I think that's what the rule is. What? Um, uh, some, like right now I'm designing like a town for a movie. So, um, I look at like what the story artists are doing. Um, if there's any like script pages, I read that. Um, I do a bunch of research on like different towns and like the location of the movie. Um, then I uh, then I start just like this. I'll do like a bunch of like little like line drawing sketches. Um, and then I'll I'll paint my favorite ones. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll post it or something. Yeah. Um, I find I, I work better under, like, a little bit of pressure. So I'll, like, give myself little deadlines. Um, otherwise, I'll like sit there and I'll noodle things for too long. Yeah. 
yeah, I'll, I'll just like select it. And I'll adjust it, repaint some things. Um, yeah, I've never had an issue, or I've never like it's never like taken too long or anything like that. Um, Yeah, at work there will always be like, uh, oh, can you send us your, your Photoshop file? Like, it's all one layer anyways. Uh, <laughs> um, if it's something like this, I won't, like, use, I'll definitely, like, won't use layers and stuff. But if it's, like, you're designing... Um, Um, say like on on Spider Man, I designed like like the subway cars with like the graffiti on them. I would put the graffiti on a layer, so then they could take that off and they could like reuse it throughout the city or something like that. Or if it's like a logo or something, I'll like design the logo like on a sign in the painting, and I might design it flat and then just put it like put it to the side. I'll like save the flat version. Um, and then I'll like warp the logo like into place into my painting, so then I can I can give them I can give like production the the sign if they want it. <clears throat> yeah, I would um. Um, maybe it's an older interior. There's more like dust buildup, and if the light's coming in through windows, um, I'll think about the dust particles in the air. You can really push that a lot. Really cool. Um, um, I'm I'm always grabbing like references for things, but I don't rely on like one reference. Um, I look at a bunch of things and try to combine them. Um, for me, I'll get like, I'll just get like a page with like a bunch of like little things that I'm looking at. Um, I don't have like a specific number, but I think if I can have it at the bottom of my screen or uh, if I can easily look at it and like see different things, then it's a good amount for me. Um, I just don't want to be like opening up Google images like every couple of, couple minutes to like find something. I want to like get that all set for myself first so then I can just like paint. Um, hmm. uh, think for a sec. I don't know. Um, Yeah, it's a really hard question. <laughs> I think of it, I'll let you know. Yeah. Um. I'll, uh. I'll learn something new, or like read a book, um, or like learn some like three D software, like something, uh, something to to just kind of like help me learn something related to art, but maybe like a little bit different. Um, like right now, I'm like drawing more, so 
probably if you asked me to do this demo like a year ago, I would have just blocked it in like all paint. Um, but now I want to like do a sketch and like do like a good drawing and then uh, and go from there. So that's it's like something I'm working on, and that helps. I feel like that's in helping me improve my painting a little bit. Um, also, giving yourself a time limit on things. Um, like I'll do uh, like lunch paintings, and I've just I just have an hour, so there's that pressure to like get something done and like. Yeah, so that that's helpful to kind of like get through something. Hey. Okay. Thanks. Non what? Uh, Edgar Payne is a big inspiration for me. Um, there's a lot of like Russian painters. I don't can't say their names, but uh, if you follow me on like Pinterest or whatever, I like pin some of them. Um, there's like some that do like really bold brush strokes and really beautiful. Huh? Maybe. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I can hear. Um, you know, like a couple of years ago, I was like, I'm going to learn Blender and I'm going to use it. And it's like everyone says you have to like learn 3D and stuff. Um, but then I just never used it in my job. I even like told my bosses and stuff, I was like, hey, I can like model that if you want. They're like, no, no, no just, just keep painting. Uh, we'll have someone else do that. <laughs> like, All right. Uh, so yeah, like rarely, rarely use any 3D at my job. I might. It's helpful for like, uh, like strange interior interiors with like lots of like pillars or like different things. Uh, so you can just like move the camera around and find like a nice angle. I do that sometimes. Um, or like city stuff, you can just make some rectangles and like find that perfect like camera angle you want. Um try to spend any time I'm not like any like free moment at work or any moment like before work or after work I'm just doing my personal work it's like the most fun for me um, on the weekends I do that It's nice to work on something where people aren't telling you what to do. You can just do whatever you want. Posting on our station? Yeah. Um, I'm kind of treating it as a like a feature film right now. Um, yeah, like a friend and I are kind of just like developing like a couple of different like stories and stuff and just treating it as like a, a movie and like how we would uh, make the movie.
Uh, yeah, I think so, right? I haven't, I haven't used it. Um, yeah, for some reason, when I'm in Procreate, I just, I just do everything with this brush. And I, I like it. <laughs> like this right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like slow way down because I'm like, oh, I've got to like say something once in a while too. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm getting I'm getting used to it because I like I teach a class, um, like an environment design class, so I have to do like demos and. I'm getting better at it, I think. I hope. My normal speed? Hmm? Yeah, definitely. Um, like, I think this is uh, this whole thing's like almost an hour. Like, usually I'd do like a full, complete painting in an hour, and it'd be like done. Uh, but because I'm talking and thinking about like other things and not just the painting, uh, yeah, I, I just slow way down. Uh, usually I have like music going so I, I can like block everything out. Is that the time? Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, any last, last questions? Um, like really fast paced, uh, like metal. <laughs> yeah. Um, Um, doing lots of master studies is really good because um, you can give yourself a time limit when you do them, and uh, then you can apply that to uh, stuff like this. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd time myself for like fifteen minutes to do like a like a master study, and then and that really sped up my like concept art. Uh, yeah, if I can. Yeah. Um, not really. Like a couple of like my production designers have kind of like pushed me to do certain things. Like when I was at Sony, my boss was like, usually I, before then I would take like a day and do like a full painting to like present, and he was like, you should do like five paintings in a day. I was like, what the heck? Is that even possible? Uh, but yeah, I started doing like, that like pushed me to like work really fast and direct and just do like quick color stuff like this. And I hated it at the time, but now it's, uh, it's really helped me. So. Um, no, I kind of, I, I leave it and then I just keep painting on top of it. And because I, I kind of like some of the lines and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I paint things warm to cool usually. And that's because, like, usually stuff is, um, is warm until it's affected by different lighting. So I painted the castle like a warmer color and then. As atmosphere and lighting is affecting the bricks, it got cooler and lighter. And then the deep shadows are warm. Um, and then the cast shadows are cool uh, because of the atmosphere color. Yeah. Yeah, great. Uh,